Welcome in this next video part of the iOS application attack service. In this video we will talk about IPC and possible attack factors within IPC. So there are different components of IPC, like we already explained in the iOS basics. So there are XPC services. XPC services are comparable with services on Mac or maybe even on Linux. So those are background services, which might be used by an app. And then this NSXPC connection is used to connect to a service. And in the later iOS versions from 17, there's also a Swift interface where you can also create those services. And else you have to create them in Objective-C. But for this training, XPC is out of scope. So I will not cover this in more detail. Then there is the user interface pasteboard. This can be used and configured to share clipboard data between apps. Then there is user activity sharing, which also can be used to share data between apps. But this can be a little bit more data, like for example, PDF files you can send to your mail client, to WhatsApp, etc. And the main thing I will cover in this video is universal links and URL schemes. So I will show you some practical examples, how to find universal links and URL schemes within an app, and also how to fuss and maybe exploit them. So if you want to have an overview about how to test for all those IPC components, then I would recommend you again to look into the OWASP Mobile Application Security Testing Guide. But for now, let's move on with some more details about universal links and URL schemes. So what is the difference between a universal link and a URL scheme? A universal link is a regular URL, so it starts with HTTPS or HTTP, but I assume nowadays it will always start with HTTPS. And then there is an associated domain configured within the app and also within a website. So for example, for the Uber app, there is a JSON file which you get if you go to the URL uber.com slash Apple App Site Association. And there can be an allow or deny list specifically for an app ID, so the application bundle. And there is one remark. If you directly enter the URL in Safari, then it might not work. So you need to share it via some other way. And then the second thing is URL schemes. So URL schemes are not regular URLs like HTTPS, but they have their own scheme. So if we look into the second example, then there is a URL scheme with a prefix Uber. And two things you can try with URL schemes, you can try to fuss it. So in this screenshot, for example, you can see the latitude and the longitude. So you can try to fuss those values, maybe spoof location or something like that. And also URL scheme hijacking is also an interesting thing. So if the app configuration is not correct, but we will not cover this one in detail, then if you also create your own app with this URL scheme Uber, then you might override the real Uber app. So then you need to trick some victim to install your app. And then you can take over the URL scheme. So this is the example of Uber. They have quite some different apps with also some wildcards and only allow lists. And if we, for example, do the same for the Threads app, and this one is a lot shorter. And as you might notice, there is an exclude true, which means this is more of a deny list instead of an allow list. So everything else will be included and they exclude a few URLs. So there are different ways to create this. First, let's check out the property list files. So in this case, I downloaded two apps, the damn Funnable iOS application and the Threads app. Now let's start with the damn Funnable Android application. So in the app folder, we should have the plist file. So I can use the IPSW from Blacktop again, and then plist, and then info.plist. And let's also save it to info.plist.json. Then we have this file, info.plist.json. And let's open it with Visual Studio Code so we can search and read it a little bit easier. CF bundle URL types. And if you search for CF bundle URL types, then there are two URL types 
or URL schemes defined, which is DVIA and then DVIA Swift. And the last one was LS application query schemes. And this one is also not available. Let's do the same for the threads application. So we create an info.plist.json file. And if we do the last search also in the threads application, then you might notice the threads application has the LS application query schemes. So from the threads, threads application, you can also use the other URL schemes. So you can open WhatsApp from threads or also the universal links like HTTP and HTTPS are also associated. And also CF bundle URL is in this case one quite long one and also one with the name Barcelona. The associated domains are not in the info.plist file, but they are in the entitlements included in the app. And those entitlements you can fetch from the app binary. So in this case, I'm in the payload folder of threads still, and then I can run IPSW Mac also on the binary, and then info minus E is entitlements, and then give me all entitlements part of this binary. And in this case, we have this entitlements file. So you can also save it as XML file, but it's quite short. But you already might notice this last part, com apple developer associated domains. And in this case, there are associated domains like threads.net and applink.threads.net, etc. And for the damn vulnerable iOS application, we can do the same, but then there are no associated domains listed. So that one does not use universal links. Then for the enumeration part, I can start with some basic checks on the binary. So just give me all the strings for the from the binary. And then we just grab for something which looks like a URL. So apparently for this damn vulnerable iOS application, it does not look really useful. It only returns real URLs and maybe some app schemes from other apps but I think those will probably not work. So could also grab for a real URL scheme, but then there are no strings found in this binary. So that's a little bit disappointing. And now I want to repeat this for the threads app. This threads app is a lot bigger, so you get more results. And also those results might be more useful. So for example, Barcelona is the app scheme we expect. And also some other app schemes like WhatsApp, for example. And most interesting things are these lists. So do these are already some examples about how to use these app links. And I was also playing a little bit around with Grab to really get a list with only app links. So this grab command gives you a list with almost only the app links. And if you go back to the slide, there is one other option. You can also use Frida and then use open URL because this is by default used for app links. So this will work on any app. So I will show you in a minute the exact command for this. And if you have a rooted device, then you can also use the user interface open. And then you can just directly open an app link and test it. And then I want to do some manual testing. So I'm using a mobile hacking lab lab device in this case. So from the web interface, you can also get a console instead of connecting over SSH. So that might be a little bit easier for now. So if you go to the console, you get this web interface. And then we can do user interface open and then we can also directly enter some app link like Barcelona. And if I just type Barcelona with some random text, then already this threads app will open. So you can just pick one of those URLs I open and then check what it does. But in this case, I also don't have an account configured. So the results are probably quite limited. So this one, OS notification setting might be interesting. So in this case, from the threads app, it goes to the settings and then you can edit some settings. Now let's start with Frida. 
So make sure you connect it over your iPhone from USB. So if you're using a lab device, you should have opened the VPN and also USB mux to connect through it. So in the testing setup, you can find more details. So if you want to attach to an existing process, we always start with Frida PS minus U USB and give me all active processes. Then we have the following Frida trace with minus M, which we used earlier for iOS. And then we searching for a method and a function with an open URL in it. And a function containing open URL. So let's do free that trace for this process ID. And then it found 115 functions. Then I could try one of those URLs. So this one is, for example, could also be interesting. Barcelona search with also some query parameter. So nothing is really happening here, but maybe there is indeed an open URL triggered. Instagram app coordinator application and app delegate application open URL. So now we already got a nice trace of what is happening. If for example, the one with OS notification setting, we can also open that one again. And then the trace is a little bit different. If you want some pointers about what is happening, then you can get this kind of information from the trace if you search for open URL. And then I would recommend to use Ghidra and then analyze the functions. And then there is one more interesting thing we can do with this threads application. So in the URL schemes, you can notice that there are a lot of, that there are some URL schemes related to some other applications. So for example, this tell will usually open the phone and just to call a number. And also there is one called local, for example. So if I try it directly with user interface open, and then I would do local, then nothing happens, nothing is triggered. Frida minus U minus A. Then we can also do Frida minus U minus P1195 to just connect to this process. Then there is one more thing we can do. This code snippet open URL is also quite useful. It is similar to the user interface open, but then from a Frida perspective, we are attached to this app in Frida. Then I can create this function in the Frida JavaScript interface, and then I can use it via open URL and then I can, for example, try something else like local. Just see what happens. Then it says false. So this local will not work within the threads app. So that's too bad. But tell might work. So then it says call AAA. So now let's move on with the damn funnable iOS application. Then there is one challenge called IPC issues, then start challenge. And then it says there is something with a phone call with a random number exposed through IPC. So you can enter some number, then press call, and then you get some output ring ring. So let's do Frida PS minus UA again. And then we want to connect to this damn vulnerable iOS application. And then also we want to search for open URL. Then 40 functions are found. So we can try if we do something like this, if it will trigger one of those functions, but nothing is triggered. And this probably makes sense because we are not using an URL scheme. Because if you want to use an URL scheme, then we should start with user interface open again, and then some URL scheme like DVIA, and then some random text, and then it even crashes the application. So that's too bad. Then we can try something different. So what I did, I loaded the app binary with Ghidra, and we can also reverse engineer it. So within Ghidra, 
we can also search for, for example, open URL. This one, app delegate application, might be interesting. So what we also can try in Ghidra is that we search for something we saw in the app, so just a string. So we saw a string with some, so based on this search result, it's also happening in this app delegate open URL. This is where this ring ring happens. And this is an hard coded string. So DS is just to store this string or use the string. And if we analyze this function a little bit more, or if you search for phone, for example, or call, then you might also be able to find this phone slash call number string. So in this case, this is probably used in combination with the URL scheme. So in this case, we need to do something with phone, call, number, and then we can enter something. Number one, two, three. And then it says calling one, two, three. So the issue with this app is that from the outside, if I can create a website with this link, then it will directly make a phone call. In short, I demonstrated how you can test for universal links and URL schemes, and also how you can do some enumeration and fussing. So for fussing, you can also create a script or use some scripts from Frida CodeShare, for example. But I hope you understand the possibilities and differences between universal links and URL schemes, and I hope to see you in the next video.